Hey there, I got something that I thought was a pretty neat uh, use case here. So I've got a uh, part that I have to machine for somebody, and there's a, a number of them that I have to do. And it is a cylinder that has two finished ends. So they are different diameters in each end. And this is not the actual part. I can't show the actual part. But this is a part I made for a mock-up just for this video. So I bored each end out to a different diameter. Uh, but what I have to be able to do is turn the entire width of this cylinder without having any marks where I might change tooling. So if we turn between centers, the driving dog has to go somewhere. Uh, you know, if we put a cap in each end and, uh, you know, a center drill in there to drive on the cap and the center drill, we could do that, but I still wouldn't be able to access the side of the cylinder. And I do need to be able to cut a feature into one end of the cylinder. It's basically an O-ring groove. And with this setup, I basically can access both ends and the entire periphery that allows me to do all of this in a single setup operation in the lathe. So in order to do this, I've chicken scratched some things together. You can see my notepad down there. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is create a mandrel with an internal expanding arbor for each end of this. And that's going to allow me to put a mandrel in the lathe and drive it from the mandrel so we don't need a driving dog. Uh, and the other end is going to be a similar mandrel with a tapered cone on the end that we can jam in there. It's an expanding mandrel as well that then will go in the tailstock and it'll allow us to reach the full perimeter of this part and, you know, machine all the features necessary. So not only do I have to turn it to dimension, but there are different features throughout this part. So um, let's go ahead and move right on to the creation of the components for what's going to go in here. And I do have to apologize in advance for some of the hand actions not mention, not matching the uh, the verbiage here that um, I had some audio issues and had to go and narrate over all of this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this piece and get right in with the machining bits of it. Okay, we're going to start off by facing our material and then we're going to center drill. That way we can extend the material out of the chuck to the full length of the mandrel that we'll be working with. So here we've got it extended to the full length creating a witness mark, and we're going to turn the outside down so I can take an initial diameter and punch that into the DRO to drive us in towards our one inch final diameter. So I'm saving you from a bunch of the repeated cuts. You see we've turned down quite a bit. We're going to come in and skim this last bit, and this is right down to our final dimension. So we're going to come in and then take a measurement of this. And uh, I believe we came in at 0.999 on this actual part. We were shooting for one inch, so that's not bad. Uh, we're going to go now and convert over to our parting operation. So we got our tail stock in there, parting off, and we leave a small nub. That way the part doesn't fall down out of my lathe and be damaged. And then we just snap it off by hand. And we've cut a few chunks from our plastic on the bandsaw. And here we're just cleaning up the faces. And then we're going to go and center drill and punch our uh, three-quarter inch hole straight through these pieces. I'm only going to show one on here since it's just a uh, wash, rinse, repeat operation. Okay, here you see we've swapped out to our collet chuck. We're going to face off our part and then center drill. Uh, we have to drill a 3 8 hole through the entire length of this part. And I don't have a 3 8 drill bit that is long enough to make the full length of the part, so we're going to have to flip this end for end. So we'll drill this first end, uh, then we'll take the material out, flip it, and repeat this operation, center drill, and drill the other side. So in doing this in the collet chuck, we get very good accuracy. So we don't have to worry about the holes misaligning. Um, and this level of accuracy is plenty enough for what we're building here. So you see we've got our center drill end, and now we're drilling the other side. Okay, We speed this up a little bit so you don't have to uh, sit here through all the boring uh, chipping away. But we just inspected that end, and there was absolutely no discernible difference uh, between where the drill came from one end or the other. Now we're going to set our length for the mandrel that will sit inside the compression rings. So we did our witness mark, and we're going to drill this down, and we're going to take this down to 750. So the same thing here, take an initial measurement, throw it in the DRO, and drive down to our 750 diameter. Uh, this one, again, is uh, relatively accurate. We want to hit 750 as closely as we can uh, to make sure that our, our compression rings aren't sloppy on the mandrel. So what I'm doing is taking that tip down to 750, and then I'll take the whole thing in one cut. 
that's going to give me with carbide on aluminum the best quality surface finish. So I've set my compound to 30 degrees and we're getting ready to cut the taper on the inside end of our mandrel. This is the part where the compression rings are going to sit up against and this helps to ensure that at the uh, mandrel end that the ring is concentric to the mandrel and then of course concentric to the part when we finally make it. So what we're going to do is just start chipping away at this corner little by little to cut our 30 degree bevel. See, we left a nice little step in there just because it looks nice that way. And here we are with our one inch nominal diameter material that had that partially finished end we showed early in. And what we're doing is we're creating the nuts that'll be used to tighten the compression rings onto the devices. So we're drilling out here. And again, this is a 3 8 drill bit. It's actually, I believe, a 5 8 We're cutting a 3 8 thread. I forget off the top of my head. But here we have our nice spiral flute tap, and these are wonderful for blind holes because, as you can see, they eject the chips rearward instead of packing them down in the hole. And I tend to put that against the tailstock just to keep it square. So here we're putting a nice little bevel. Here you can see what we've created. got our threaded end, and now we're putting that same 30-degree taper on the end of what is going to be our nut. That way it also centers on the compression rings. And now we're going to go over with enough material uh, to cut this off. We're going to part it and then take it over to the mill for final operations to uh, you know, put the six-sided flanges on there. So we got another one of these we did. Here they are. We're putting them back in the lathes to just clear off the little top hat that we created prior to taking them to the mill to make the uh, actual flats for the wrench. Here we are. We've got one of those nut ends in our six-sided collet block, and we're just checking the size, punching some numbers into the DRO, and I'm just establishing uh, my Z with the uh, mill there. And now we're going to align it in the vise. We're using just a parallel to align with the edge of the vise. And once we're dialed in, we'll flip it 180 degrees and cut the opposite. And then what we do is we measure that. And then we determine the total depth needed to get to our three quarter size, divide by two, and take half off each side. So as we've got that, you see what we're doing is we're going to flip this. And once I get it to where I believe I'm at three quarters of an inch, I take it out and then investigate it with the calipers to be sure that it is indeed three quarters of an inch. And then we just go through and continue to cut across the remainder of the six sides in the collet block to form our nut head. Uh, we're going to do this twice because, you know, we've got two of them to do. So here we go, straighten it up. And uh, we're going to begin doing our final dimension cuts here, getting down to that three quarter inch size. So we'll do this and then just rotate per side. Here we go. And taking those all in one pass, the two flute end mills, nice and sharp, does a good job in aluminum. You can see we're getting a nice shiny finish. So we've got an excellent quality three quarter inch nut. We're going to assemble our plastic onto our mandrel that we made for turning down to diameter on the lathe. Uh, so simple stuff, we're just going to turn this down. But you'll notice the nuts came out nice and smooth instead of the rough ones I had shown earlier. Uh, there was some lathe work to polish this up, but unfortunately I lost the footage of that. Here we go. We're back in the sixth jaw with our plastic here. Had to go and uh, tighten up the uh, cutter there, as you see. So we're going to clean that edge up, punch in zero on the DRO. We're going to come over our distance. And what we're going to do first is cut a groove that our O-ring is going to sit in. So we'll go ahead and cut this groove. And we want it uh, about a hundred thousandth wide is where I determined that was the sweet spot, really. And then we're just going to cut off. That becomes our compression washer clear all the extra plastic out of here. And now what we're doing is really just cleaning that plastic up so I can test fit the O-ring. It's a little bit high, so we're going to cut that in a little deeper. So we're about 100,000 wide, and here we're going to go about 130,000 deep. The O-ring is 140,000 thick. So that leaves 10,000 sitting above, and when we squeeze it, then it can, of course, expand further into the bore. So here's our O-ring test fit. We're getting very close to the depth that we wanted to have. This first one is what actually set that 130,000th depth. I was uh, basically just trial and erroring this until the part fits snugly. Okay, So that worked. We've got our part. We're going to clean up our edges here just a little teeny bit. There's our O-ring and exactly the fit that we wanted to have. Wonderful. So we're going to pull this out, set our zero once again, clean up that edge, and uh, come in and part off for our compression ring. So basically, we have to create for the compression rings and two of the washers. I'm only going to show one set of what I've done here. So there's the next O-ring groove. We had our size, so this one's a lot faster. 
So here you see all of the components we've created. We're going to take a couple of these away because the interior cuts on the sample piece are a little shorter, and we want to be able to recess all of our components into the end so we can get to both ends to machine features. So we're going to take one of our compression rings and fit it with an O-ring, and then we're going to take the compression washer and place over that. As you can see, the hole is quite a bit bigger than the uh, 3 8 bolt that we intend on using, so we have some large washers that we're going to put on the back side to hold all of this together. Now the holes are three quarters of an inch, that way the compression rings could be fit on either end, either the mandrel or the tailstock end. So we're going to put our bolt in here and take our nut that we made, and remember we put a cone on the end of that nut, so that cone actually sits in the middle, that three quarter hole on our compression ring, and that keeps everything concentric. So we have the head of the nut has a 60 degree taper to accept our tailstock, there's a 60 degree taper on the opposite side that fits in the ring. So then we're going to tighten this together inside of the tube. So what we have to do is I'm going to snug it up here just a little bit to hold things together. And we place it in our tube and seat it to whatever depth we feel is appropriate. And there I got to tighten it up a little bit. We were just kind of missed a couple threads here. Need to go down a little bit further and we'll stick that back in. So we're going to stick it in. And now to fix this first end, we have to obviously get to the nut internally. So we're going to use a ratchet wrench and stick that down through the inside of the piece to hold the, the head of the bolt internally. So while we have that in there, we're going to hold it basically still and use a three quarter inch wrench on the outside. So here's our ratchet. Uh, we're going to need another extension that wasn't quite long enough. So I'm going to grab one here and we'll throw another extension on here and then uh, down inside and grab our bolt. So we're going to push this through so you can see what I'm talking about here. There we go. That's how it'll be inside. So we're going to push that back into depth and grab our three quarter inch wrench and just tighten this end down until it has retained uh, its position in there and is fairly firm. So depending upon what kind of cuts you need to do, how thick your material is, that may dictate how tight you make this. Very thin-walled material could possibly be distorted by that O-ring pushing outward. So make sure you keep that in, into consideration. All right, so we've got our tailstock end. Let's do our mandrel end here. So pretty much the same thing, except here we're using some threaded rod. Okay, And we're going to assemble our, our compression ring with the O-ring on it. And then we're going to take our washer here. Now you see you have extra material. Uh, this one is longer to go through two compression rings, so we have to use two on this end. So let's go ahead and grab two of these. And again, this can be made to fit for whatever purpose you have. So we're going to put two of the compression rings with two O-rings on here, then our washer, okay, and the other nut that we made, again with a 60-degree taper that is going down into that plastic ring to help make sure everything is concentric. So those two outer rings are captured between two tapers. Okay, now asking yourself, how do we tighten this? We put the other nut inside. Okay, so we're going to give it a snugging outside. Here we go. And then all we really need to do is once we insert it, is just hold the mandrel with our hand and then tighten the nut on the outside. There's enough friction on the internal nut to make sure that it stays put while we're tightening this outside. So here we go. We're going to just tighten that up. Spinning a little bit, got to hold on nice and tight. Might even need to grab a cloth or a glove or something along those lines. See, it's spinning in my hand. It's a little bit oily, so it was a little difficult to do. I actually had to put a glove on to grab that mandrel to be able to uh, tighten it fully. So we'll do that. We'll get it fully tightened, and then we'll get over to the lathe. And here you can see we've got our completed assembly and part in the lathe. You can see that we have our tapered nut spinning in our tailstock. We're going to clean up this end, get a nice square corner. And now we're going to go through and clean up the outside surface. If anybody's worked with this tubing before, you know that it's not actually round, even though it appears like it. Uh, so there's some highs and lows in there. We're going to take a few passes in order to clean up this tube. But you can see that this is going to allow us to stay concentric with the center bore and then create the outside surfaces that, again, are concentric, but also place our features in here. So we're going to take this down a little bit, and uh, what we're then going to do is momentarily switch tools just to a tool that cuts from the other direction. Uh, that way I can clean up that outer edge. So we're going to go through and put a high-speed steel in really quickly just to clean up that other edge. It was a little rough, 
and now our tapered point to cut in our bevel. That's one of the features that would be in our finished part. So you can see we can access the entire length of the part during this turning operation. And here's just a little shot for the end. I don't know if you'll notice, but next to the 3 8 inch bolt, I actually did make a collar, uh, a bushing, if you will, for the uh, the tailstock end. What was happening is that that bolt was allowed to move around too much, and I just didn't like uh, that it was allowing um, allowing the part to go out of concentricity a little bit. So putting that bushing in there just fixed that right up. So we took care of that. That was an easy thing to make. Just took another minute. I don't have that on film, but it was uh, unbelievably simplistic. I'm sure you can imagine. So our bolt just goes through there, and then those fit onto the tailstock bushing, just like we have the mandrel for the um, collet chuck. And again, our tapered nut goes through to hold the compression ring concentric. So we've got the same features on here. So we've got this end that goes in the tail and the other end that goes into the headstock. And I've made a couple of quick changes. I'm still using the threaded rod. I did jam two nuts together on the other end with a lock washer uh, to help keep them uh, staying tight. I don't need the threaded uh, tapered nut in this sense. It's internal. Uh, but I might make something else for that in the future, uh, possibly an end with some flats or on the threaded rod, put a flat to hold the rod while I turn the external nut to compress. But in any event, this worked very, very well. Uh, the, the, um, jam nuts on the end, sorry, I'm stripping over my own tongue here. Jam nuts on the end work very well to hold that shaft and keep it from turning. So I did put some pliers on the threaded end to hold it while I turned this nut and uh, chewed it up a little bit. So what I'll probably do is just take uh, a piece of threaded rod and put some flats right on the rod. That way I've got a spot to hold the wrench and uh, just torque that down that way. That would allow me to put that nut on and off very easily and change out parts. Uh, but this was tested, taking it out of the, the lathe and putting it back in, and it worked quite well. Uh, there's the tapered nut that I mentioned. Uh, I might put a flat in there to maybe capture a nut like this, so that would be on the external side. But so far, the project works very well. It works as designed. It does exactly what I intended to do. And you can see the finished result right here above all of my parts. So if you'd like to make one of these, I, I recommend going for it. You know, it lets you access that full exterior uh, keeps the interiors nice and pristine, okay? and uh, you can cut as many features as you want in the exterior of that part, and if you have multiple of these to do, it's very quick to swap over and perform operations on a batch of parts. Thank you for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed it.